here, it's about 6.8 degrees centigrade. So that's measured by these machines overhead. These monitors are measuring that and also humidity. So right now, it's about 88% humidity in here, which isn't too bad for this chapel. It's not very well ventilated naturally. These fans were added in later on to help the, the air be extracted and brought in. So this fan brings air in, as do fans here the way here, and they're brought out of the North Tower to fans. That changes the air whenever it's, it's suitable to do so. So whenever it's outside is drier, the air is brought in to here. It's all going forward. The data from these machines goes to Cambridge, England. It's live data. And they watch this very closely, and they are the leaders in Europe in this kind of conservation work. So a chapel is what it is, a royal chapel. This is the nave, N-A-V-E, -E, nave. Comes from navy, transportation. People coming here from an ordinary life are transported to a spiritual place. People who are here in this area are non-clergy. The clergy are in here, in the chancel, the holy area. This faces east, as we know. The sun rises in the east, comes in small windows, the new dawn and the new day, Christ's resurrection in light every day. In the walk, this door here, the clergy. This is the main door. Next door here, that door is the back door, really. But this door here is the main door once was. This building is 1134. Next door is the cathedral, 1235 onwards. So for 100 years, that door opened out onto the view of Rock of Cashel. Round Tower was there, the cross was there. They come in, this door, the clergy, bringing in the body and blood of Christ on a plate, a loaf of bread and the wine. Walk down along the wall in procession, slowly, because the walkway is there. One can walk along the wall in this way. A path is there for them to do that. Next door, there's no wall over there, no walkway there. The archway and the chancel arch and the roof arch are not in centred. They're offset, they're not aligned at all. To leave the access way on the wall for those to walk in. They keep also, in this elaborate doorway here, the North Tower, in there, they keep Christ's body and blood as well. In the Bible, we are told that Christ's tomb was cut in stone. So a stone-cut tower is appropriate for that as well. They bring it in here in procession, and in here they go to the chancel. We'll go there now as well, so please follow me up. So please come in, use all the space provided. Okay, please stand there as well. Please do that. Now that's the choir. You must sing if you're there. I'm All just right. kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> People do. I got cost many times with that one. So please come in. Please come in and look up that way there. And this bus over here. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Just to say that this entire area here was once fully painted in Christ's early life. So it's told in the New Testament. Chapter 2 of Matthew describes the three wise men's journey and onwards and so on, Christ's birth and so on and so forth. It was once told in imagery all overhead here. For teaching, for the most part, the glory of God too, as well, of course. The paint came from Afghanistan, the blue, it's called lapis lazuli. The red came from Spain, it's called vermilion. Expensive proposition, of course. So, hidden away for centuries with whitewash. Hmm. Shirts changed its message away from imagery and back to the book, to read the book together and sing songs together. No more looking around at distractions, back to the word of God in the book. That was the key message to the people. So for no bad reason really, hidden away for centuries. <coughs> Unfortunately, the paint, the salt in the paint, became crystalline with the humidity in here. And the paint became very crumbly and all fell apart, unfortunately. So back in the 80s, they tried to do some work on this, bringing the whitewash away, unfortunately, or the paint with it. But in this quadrant here, a section is there which has King Herod and the three wise men in audience with him. It's all, of course, in the Bible again, and they are asking King Herod, where will the child be born? Of course, he doesn't actually know, luckily enough. And he asks them to go find out, then tell him what they don't tell them, of course. Let him know. So that was once all overhead, as I said, for teaching really. Before, the Irish would use stone crosses for teaching. On them was scripture, in imagery, to explain to people Christ's life story. And then they used images like this, and then stained glass for the same reason, all for teaching. Overhead here are some strange creatures. What could they possibly be? Well, we think they're grotesques. 
pagan symbols. You could reasonably ask, why is there a pagan symbol in a Christian church? Well, it's very much a crossover church, the old and the new together going forward. So it looks to the future in terms of its style, looks to the past as well with these images to frighten away any evil spirit in the old faith. Perhaps from a pagan walking in here thinking I shouldn't really be here, I see these and think, oh, that's familiar to me, recognize that. Maybe it isn't that different after all being in here. Perhaps it's just an evolution of my own faith. Maybe I'll stay a while, maybe I'll convert later on. It's trickery maybe as well, let's say too. Overhead here are humans. Who are these? Perhaps they're sponsors. They paid to be there possibly. They're buying their salvation, of course. It's guaranteed. Say a mass in here, say a prayer for their soul. Oh, they'll go to heaven. Absolutely, definitely. That was the way back then. An insurance policy of a kind back in the day, we believe as well. So, now, any questions on any of that? Very well. Now, the floor under our feet is not, of course, the original floor. It's a timber floor. There used to be flagstones here. And then for years, was gravel here. Gravel would absorb moisture. That was a good thing, but it also retained the moisture, which is a bad thing. So they put in a timber floating floor, which allows air to go underneath circulating out, which is better for the building going forward as well. We've seen a huge change in the last 10 years of the building. 10 years ago, this was very much a very damp, humid environment. On the walls, the green and black growth, all cleaned off now. So it's got the best chance going forward to have the best chance to survive. That's our aim, so it's protection, conservation of this special building. You'll see here and there, perhaps one door, like these, a gable end, but a full church is here, it's actually only of this type, of this age. We move down again to this other end, just down here.